Welcome. This quick tour shows the IGI editor window and gives an orientation to the functions of the various areas. This basic information will help increase your efficiency in editing later. We'll introduce the graphics area, bird's eye view, title bar, status bar, command menus, tool buttons, object browser, the command window layer list area, and the text area. The purpose is to show you many options so that you can choose the best method of operation for your situation. You don't have to remember all the details. The help system is context sensitive and very thorough. You can use it to give you the details later or anytime you have an operational question. The area where we view the data and where most of the action happens is the graphics area. You can zoom and scroll in this area with the standard mouse wheel zooming, rolling in and out, and scroll bars. The IGI software often provides several ways to do a single task. This flexibility may seem daunting at first, but as you begin to edit, you will soon see the benefit of having these options. For example, we can zoom in several ways, in and out with the mouse wheel or with the page up page down keys. We can press the home key to zoom to display all. Or zoom with the window when the system's ready for a command with a mouse click in each corner of the zoom window. We can also zoom to a specific XY location. This is useful when you need to check a feature at a given location like the request shown in this note. You can copy the location right into the command. To scroll or pan through the job, use the scroll bars or press the arrow keys. Up, up, down, down, left, left, right, right, to scroll in any direction. The graphics area has a pop-up menu for running common viewing and editing commands. Right-click on features or any location in the graphics area for a list of options, including zooming operations, as well as deleting, changing, moving, copying, or listing features. The bird's eye view shows you which part of the job is currently displayed in the graphics area. Watch what happens to it when we zoom out with the mouse wheel. And look at what happens when we drag the highlighted area around in the bird's eye. Combine these methods when you want to visually inspect a job. Let's zoom to a level that's comfortable for inspection. Then move through the job, one screen at a time, using the scroll bars. The bird's eye shows our movement through the job. Uh-huh, this looks like a problem. We can list information about it or delete it with a right-click option. Let's delete it and continue with our tour. This area is the title bar. It shows the job name and current object if you're working with hierarchy, and it also shows the job units and display units for both size and location. It has the standard Windows buttons for minimize, maximize, and close. This area is the status bar. It tells you the size of the job's extents, listing the minimum and maximum XY points, and it reports the current location of our cursor. The status bar also shows a description of the command if we hover the cursor over a tool button, or if we hover over one of the commands in the menu. Let's summarize. The tools for zooming in the graphics area include the mouse wheel, home key, zoom window, page up, page down, zoom to location command, and the bird's eye window. The tools for scrolling include the up, down, left, right arrow keys and the scroll bars. In addition, we learned that the title bar shows the job name and units. The status bar shows the job extents, current cursor location, tool tip for any command or button the cursor is hovering over, and the bird's eye shows the overall view of the job, giving you some context for the current view displayed in the graphics area. This section introduces the menus which hold all the editor commands. It also shows how to add and remove tool buttons for commands you use frequently. 
This flexible editor has many commands and viewing options, so we designed the general tour to show how it's organized and ways to customize it for your specific application. We'll also show how to get help when you need it. You won't have to remember all your options. You can look them up as you need them. All of the commands are organized in menus. You can find them by thinking about the task you want to do. Let's take a look. File covers file management tasks like saving, add files, and exit. Edit covers feature editing like move copy, step and repeat, delete, explode, and many other editing tasks. Add is the go-to for adding features to the job. Change offers ways to change the characteristics of features, size, shape, color, and attributes. View holds commands for adjusting the view of both data and the editor window. Info commands get you information about data in the job. Utilities runs commands for utilities like layer generation and feature manipulation, optimizations, AOI, and more. Tools provide tools for working with log files, variables, or setting options. Help gives access to help and product information. Toolbars are a great way to access commands you run frequently. Customize your editor by adding or removing tool buttons or toolbars. For example, if we add traces to many jobs, we could add the tool button to our IGI editor window. Hmm, which of the command menus should I use to do that? Since we are customizing how the editor window looks, we'll find this command on the view menu. Select customize. Click on the Commands tab. We're looking for an Add Command button, so let's select the Add category. Drag the Tool button to the Editor window. You can place it on its own separate toolbar, either Docked or Undocked, or place it on one of the existing toolbars. To remove a Tool button, you can just drag it back to the Customize dialog. Close the dialog when you're done. All of the areas of the editor can be undocked or docked by dragging them by their drag handles. If you should accidentally close one of the areas, like the command window layer list, don't worry, you can easily open it up again from the view menu. Now let's look at some ways to get help. If you ever wondered about a command and what it does, you can find out quickly with the What's This button. Just click on the What's This button, then on a command or a tool button. Or simply hover the mouse and press the F1 key. Most of the graphics in the Help contain more detail about their settings. Click on an area of the graphic for more information. Help also works for areas of the window, like the bird's eye. And when you're running a command, the F1 key at any dialog also brings up help. Remember, the graphics will tell you more. Use the contents, index, and search tabs in the help window to find the information you need. In this section, we learned that all commands are available in the menus. You can add or remove tool buttons with the View Customize command. And you can use the F1, What's This button, and Help menu to access context-sensitive and general help. This section introduces the Command Window Layer List area and the Text area. The Command Window Layer List area displays the layer list when the system is ready for a command and it shows picking or location tools while the commands are running. The text area displays messages and reports. Some are interactive, enabling you to zoom to the listed item with a click. Let's begin with the command window layer list. Since the system is ready for a command, layer information is displayed. Each line shows the layer color, active displayed status, layer name, layer number, contrast, layer type, and has a checkbox for outline mode. Right-click for further options. 
Here we see an option for selecting all layers, controlling active displayed status, allowing labeling, as well as other layer management tasks. Different options are available depending upon which column in the list you right click. Here we see options for shifting layers up and down. Make layers active and displayed by checking or clearing boxes in the layer list. Active means editing, such as adding features, can be done on that layer. Displayed means layers are shown in the graphics area. With Allow Labeling, you can make each field in the layer list editable for a quick way to make layer adjustments. Be sure to click the Apply button to finalize your changes. The layer list offers many more functions that we have not shown here. Please view the layer list introduction tutorial or read the help to master them. It's well worth the time. When running a command, the layer list becomes the command window. If we run the delete command, we can see it prompts us for what to do, in this case, picking features to delete, and it gives us tools to help do the picking. A common way to pick is with the mouse. Another is window picking and picking all. You can see that the features are highlighted as they're picked. There are many more ways to pick features and you'll learn all about them in the picking intro tutorial or in the help. Normally an enter at this point in the command would be used to finish the deletions, but we'll press escape to cancel the delete command. Now let's add some round 50 mil pads to see what the command window looks like when you need to select a location. Just like picking, you'll be prompted for which locations to select and given location tools for selecting them. Some of the most common ways to select locations are clicking on a location with the mouse, entering an XY coordinate, and selecting locations on other features. You can see there are a variety of other location tools available. Which tools will work best for you will depend on the type of editing you do. Go to the location intro tutorial or to the help to learn more. Let's click enter in the command window or on the keyboard to finalize the added pads. This section covered the one area of the editor window which is used for both layer list and command area functions. Layer list controls whether layers are active and or displayed and other controls that you'll learn about in the layer list intro tutorial. Command area shows prompts and picking or location tools while commands are running. The tools for picking geometry include the mouse, windows, other tools for filtering, chain picking, and picking all. And the tools for specifying locations include mouse, tools for XY coordinates, locations on other features, locations at the intersections of two entities, uh, user-defined box locations, and more. Now let's look at the last area of the IGI editor window, the text area. This area lists messages as well as reports from running commands. Most often, reports are interactive and you can click on an item to zoom to that feature in the graphics area. To see how this works, let's run the check polygons command to report all self-overlapping polygons. You'll see the results of the command are listed in the text window. Click on an item in the report and the graphics area zooms to display that feature. Another way to use this interactivity is by copying information from the text window when measuring features. Run the measure ID command to list information about features you pick. Right click on the listing for a pop-up menu. Let's select copy all to the text window. Now, if we zoom or pan to a different part of the job and we want to return to the previous pad we measured, we can just click on that location and it is centered in the graphics area. To summarize, in addition to reporting information and messages, you can use the text area to click on an item in an interactive report to zoom to it, or to copy locations from listings into the text area for zooming later. 
Now that you've been given the basic tour, we suggest you watch the layer list intro, picking intro, and location intro. They're pretty short tutorials and will give you a strong base for operational tasks and will teach you the basics so you can concentrate on features that are more specific to your work during customized training.